Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining today. This is your host Nino, inviting you to a video in which we shall be installing FreeDOS, but which I cannot entirely demonstrate on the live Pocket 386 because this is the very video in which it ends up in a body bag. Enjoy! And so it occurs, ladies and gentlemen, that we install now FreeDOS. Here live from the FreeDOS website, you may grab exactly FreeDOS for everyone, the live CD. It will come as a zip file, including a floppy disk for helping the boot, but I think we will not need that, as we shall simply boot from the CD-ROM. And then we shall use these media so obtained in order to install FreeDOS in a virtual machine onto a virtual hard disk. And that image, that hard disk image we thereby create, like this virtual hard disk, it will be then necessary to put onto the compact flash card. Depending on your operating system, that last step may vary considerably and unfortunately that's not something I can help you with all that much. I'm personally using Linux. Mac OS should work similarly unless Apple ever builds in one of their little limitations and access requirements. And Windows is a completely different tradition in handling devices so you will have to use there one of the raw image writers available in order to get your final virtual hard disk image onto the compact flash card from which your Pocket 386 shall physically boot. Okay, we have no other choice because the Pocket 386 simply does not have any other drive from which to install to the hard drive. In order to do anything, it would be nice to have a, an image. So how about this one? You are using the command camu image to create a file of raw nature named ridiculously with a very specific size. That size is in order to have 917 heads, 15 uh, cylinders, 15 heads and 17 sectors. So that geometry which is a predefined hard drive inside your Pocket 386 can be created by using exactly this size in bytes in order to have a camu hard drive. All right. And that we shall use in, a, in an absolutely monstrous command. So we are using camu system i386. If you install camu on your operating system, likely you will have various camu sub-programs, depending on what sort of computer to uh, uh, emulate and this is really a classical 32-bit system as opposed to 64-bit systems which come later. We want 8 megabyte. We want to use as a drive, this is all just one line, right? We want to use as a drive a file, the file we just created as a raw image. So format is equal to raw. The machine is an ISA PC. The CPU is a 486, not exactly true, but close enough if anything wants to poke around <laughs> the CPU type. At least this is not, you know, Pentium whatever. A PC BIOS shall be supplied. SMP defines one CPU with one core, so nothing fancy. The drive, you know, I just put in the floppy drive for good measure, but I shall be trying definitely uh, to to be boot to boot from the CD-ROM. So this part here is rather optional. You may leave it out if you feel so inclined. And the CD-ROM is the live CD ESO we got, and we shall be booting D. In other words, the CD-ROM drive. So while the camu command is long, and I accept that criticism, and it is of course not without veracity, 
it is also not completely incomprehensible, utterly intransparent, and so on and so forth. It belongs to these commands which you don't like to compose yourself. But now that you have it in front of you on the screen, I'm sure you can pause this video and just type it off, right? And here we have just booted from the CD and we want to install to the hard disk. And here I expect the partitioning not to fail, as it did in the previous experiment, which was not running under Camu. It should still be mentioned that Camu, while pretty swift, is also not infinitely fast. This install is going to take a long, long time. English shall be the language we use in FreeDOS here. And we can now simply progress towards partitioning the hard disk. Yes, continue with the installation. Yeah, <laughs> we will be watching a lot of blue screens. In the end, when the installation just, you know, takes time to complete, maybe we will no longer go through all the details. But here it is still interesting, for here we pick to partition drive C. This is exactly where FreeDOS F disk was unwilling to cooperate with 86 box emulators hard disks. Yeah, reboot now. And there we go again into the CD. So, install to hard disk we select again. You see, once you do this complex chemo command, you're never again bothered by it. You just simply start to handle things from inside the computer. This, this really feels very much like the real machine. Right, like I did not even change media or anything, we're just seeing the normal simple camo display of whatever is happening on the virtual computer screen. It's not that scary. <laughs> and now it will certainly require us to format that disk. Uh, no, first my preferred Engl uh, my preferred English. Yes, I prefer English here. My preferred language. Yes, I know it is a whole operating system. Yes, continue with the installation. Drive C does not appear to be formatted. Yes, please erase and return drive C. Here you need to press the up arrow because if you reflexively just pr press enter, you're out in DOS. <laughs> that fortunately works swiftly. Press a key, enter. gathering some information to prepare for the installation yeah whatever devices it is trying to now probe later will be of course somewhat different in the pocket 386 but at least this is dos i can tell you i tried to install windows nt3 and that totally did not work enter here because it simply required essentially a 486 CPU and the BIOS. It could work on a 386, but the BIOS was too old and the whole thing simply died and would refuse to continue the installation. It will tell you that some driver is missing, which actually wasn't missing, but the BIOS was too old and so on and so forth. At least this type of adventure, FreeDOS, is liberating us from and once installed it should be rather easy to boot it 
I showed you in the beginning of this video a very specific size of the hard disk. This is because I believe that a certain disk type in the Pocket 386 will accept it without issues. However, the consequence is that we now cannot just press enter for a full installation, including applications and games, for we are using slightly over 100 megabyte, and <laughs> that takes several hundred megabyte. So instead, we shall be going for a plain DOS system. And that's now the part that takes its sweet time. Up arrow again, so we don't just get out to DOS. And now grab a cup of coffee and cookies and a soup and take a bath and cook yourself, I don't know, some cacao or whatever you wish, because this is now going to take forever. I might speed it up though, or abbreviate it so you don't have to wait through all of it. And so our installation has completed, ladies and gentlemen. Let us just reboot to see that it works. We're demanding that it boots from the hard disk. We are not pressing install now. And pressing enter on this gem whatever thing. Here we are now having our free DOS installation booting. The CD driver thing is cute, we might remove it from wherever it gets loaded because the Pocket 386 is not going to be having a CD or we might just at least leave it in as a marker in case we want to access that in the future should we wish to install further things from CD-ROM. And with that we may now execute DIR, which was the test classically employed by the Digital Impl Equipment Corporation to test a system whether it is minimally viable. It is. <laughs> Free DOS is working. I am closing Camu. And now this here, this thing here, is the installed hard disk. And I might even show you that in a hex editor. Ah, okay, maybe I'm just having G-Hex and not G-Hex 2. Yeah, and there you can see that it is truly populated. So what remains to be done? And supposing that you have made a proper backup of your Pocket 386 hard drive or compact flash card or that you're using a new compact flash card is to DD or write the image to the compact flash card. For me this is def sdb but you have to be really really careful with that because if you get the wrong device if you get you know <laughs> some second hard disk that you may have you will be crying a lot. I would be crying a lot. <laughs> and then block size, one megabyte. Uh, status is equal to progress. We want to see what it's doing. O flag, output flag is direct. So don't use cages and funny stuff that will prevent things from being written immediately. Yeah, and now I would be pressing enter. I just have to ca fetch my card. And once this command has completed, we shall see each other in the real world. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the machine with FreeDOS installed. Unfortunately, it will not boot FreeDOS because it is in a body bag of sorts. It will not boot anything ever again because the hardware <laughs> once again gave up on me and is now but a piece of trash which has the hope of serving as spare parts depot in the future. 
But trust me, I know what I was doing. If you follow the steps before, then hopefully your machine is going to boot and hopefully your machine will not behave like that. I should, however, mention that this video has been made on a Friday the 13th and the date has truly lived up to its name. With that, thank you very much for watching. You are very much invited to come here again for further videos. If you what if you like what you're seeing, <laughs> maybe not that part, but in general, I, I'm very much inviting you to become a subscriber if you're not yet one. Until we meet again, have a wonderful time. Thank you for watching, and from me, goodbye.